Alright you guys, welcome back. This is Donovan and you are now tuned in to the Donovan Sadiq Show. And we are going to talk about something that is deep to my heart. If you guys have been paying attention, I posted today about Tech Sergeant Geraldine Lovely. If you guys don't remember who Geraldine Lovely is, she was the Tech Sergeant in a secured group that on Facebook on Facebook that had basically asked the question and her question was why is it why the fuck do these black women have attitudes and she's mostly talking about you know uh, people in her command and the most the, her subordinates that she has run across and uh, she was taken to task for asking um Number one, she gave her opinion and she asked the question like what when I saw the video, basically she was saying like, what can I do right. to uh, be a better supervisor right. or to reach them to where they don't talk to me a certain way with these fucking attitudes? And of course, some some probably some Negro dimed her out and saying this is racist. To me, the only thing she did wrong in that video was she was in uniform as she was ranting and, she posted it. and when she posted so uh, outside of that i don't i believe she didn't do anything wrong because is what she's saying what she's saying true now i think what she is saying true as a narrative as a whole does it affect all black women no i don't think it affects all black women but as a whole to a majority of black women you have a whole generation of black women that have a diva like attitude and if you don't believe it's true watch the real housewives of atlanta Watch Love and Hip Hop. Listen to Cardi B. Watch what they're doing. I mean, all these younger generation kids have this attitude. And I mean, would you agree with that or would you disagree with that? Um, I would say that's true for some. I always like, as always, I don't like to use absolutes. I would mm-hmm. say it's true for some. Also, in the article, said that she was uh, uh, Sergeant uh, Lovely was disciplined, although they wouldn't disclose what the disciplinary actions were. Mm-hmm. But she was disciplined. Right. Um, and, and usually in a situation like that, okay, she basically probably went through an Article 15 because what it was, it did break news. Mm-hmm. And the problem is that it made it put the Air Force in a bad light because she is not the only supervisor that has said that. I said that when I was in the military. Of course, I didn't go on Facebook and do viral. that. Yeah, I didn't go viral to do that. When you talk to first sergeants and any these little groups that we have within the military, we do discuss our uh, airmen and our troops uh, performance. And that's one of the things that when in the Air Force, we have a performance report called an uh, EPR, which is an enlisted performance report. And that basically kind of tells how that person is doing and where they should be at. And, you know, you get these little levels and even we have thing called OPR officer performance reports. Mm -hmm. And that is the death knell if the military is going to keep you, if you're not going to keep you and stuff like that. So, if you're doing these EPRs, of course that's going to come up. So if Deanna came up and she's on an EPR, one thing I would ask her, I would ask you as her supervisor, well, what do you think one of her major problems is? One of the major things I used to get as a uh, officer from my supervisors from, and I didn't really deal with a lot of black people in my unit because I was in an air wing uh, or I was in an airlift squadron. Not a lot of black people and stuff like that in there, so we didn't have to deal with that problem. But the ones that we did have, big thing came up, attitude. It was always an attitude where her attitude could be better. This could be better. Their attitude could be better. And um, it's, it's an ongoing problem. And my brother's in the military right now, and I'm very sure he runs across the same thing, you know, in some of his female subordinates. So, um, Well, let me ask you this. I have, actually have two questions I want sure. to ask you. The first one is, um, if you had to write a letter to the Air Force in Sergeant Lovely's defense, what would you say as to why she shouldn't have been punished? Well, number one, I wouldn't write a letter well, I'm in just her defense say hypothetically, because that ain't how the military works. Well, but if you had to. If I had to, I would say in defense, using my experience, I would write the letter based on my experience and mm-hmm. what I've done and, and whatever the punishment is that she was uh, given. And I'm very sure it wasn't a, she didn't lose rank. I'm very sure she didn't lose. Um, um, uh, she got taken from her supervisor position, but in the military, when you're an NCO, you're always a supervisor. It doesn't so matter. this was pretty much probably just for cosmetics. It's, it's cosmetic. They, they probably gave her LOR, a letter of reprimand. Yeah. Let's it goes let in them know. Yes. It goes in her file for yeah. six months and then it's removed. How do I know about an LOR? Cause when I was enlisted, I got a lot of them. 
He was bad as hell. I wasn't bad. I just did certain things that maybe I shouldn't have done. Like, you know, this one guy at the gate, the little gate guards, he stopped my girlfriend. Not gay. Gate. Yeah, gate. He stopped my girlfriend at the uh, gate and got her information. Now, she was military, too. And she told me about it that night. So the next day, I went into the security forces squadron and started beating his ass. Why and confronted you, him. Why did you beat him up? Uh, because I got to let him know that uh, that wasn't appropriate what he did. I didn't you appreciate have it. You the man? Well, that's what I'm saying. I confronted him and then we got an altercation. Got it. Yeah, so. And it wasn't. He was out there on the base walking tall and that's talking it. tough. And I got 30 days uh, correctional uh, custody confinement type thing. Well, and, damn. You know, but that. But that so you yeah, have been to jail. No, no, that wasn't ah. a jail. No, I didn't go to jail. It was a correctional <laughs> thing. But uh, that was in the days, remember, I, I'm an old school guy. So that was in the days of SAC, TAC, and MAC. You could do stuff like that. And it's like, a, you know, we know things like that happen. Yeah. Not like nowadays where if you do that, your career is over. It's pretty much finished. Right. It's not going to be tolerated. Because uh, back in my day, we used to have like keg parties at the end of the day where they get like the, the, you know, the beer and stuff. Oh, I know and all you, about it. I'm you, just playing. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm, I'm sure you do. I don't know. <laughs> But, you know, we would drink after work, you yeah. know, and uh, they don't do that now. That's um, that, that's something that's not tolerated anymore. So. Yeah. So it, it was a different time and in, in, in place. And um, so my second question. Sure. Can we all just chalk it up to that's just the way a lot of black women are. Maybe we don't have attitudes per se. Maybe mm. that's just our personality. Maybe that's just how sure. we are. No, I, I would agree with that. But at the same time, though. Isn't it funny? You're in a secret group where you're supposed to express ideas and your opinions. And I bet you it was a black woman that dimed her out because it seems like every time it's like when I talk about weave, what's the first response if I say something about weave? Nigga, that, who the hell you think you no, 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 <laughs> no. They'll say, oh, it's just easier to do it this way. You know, they'll come up with this. It's like they have a sheet and they go, OK, if he says this. This is your response. If he says this, this is your response. Oh, it's a go-to, the yeah, talking points. Yeah, yeah, your talking points. Because no matter who you go to, they have they have a a response. How can you defend pink hair? How do you defend that? But you they can do. defend it because in America, America, America mm-hmm. you can wear what the hell you want. That's to true. Wear. That's how you defend it. If I want to go out there with some pink drawers on top of my bald ass head, and, and, I can do that. And, and that's true. But in the context of why should I take you seriously as a 47 year old woman? Well, it's, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Play devil's advocate, okay. goddamn it. Uh, maybe I don't care if you take me seriously. Right. If, and now this is where the black woman going to come out. Mm-hmm. If you ain't writing my bills, that, see, there you it ain't is. doing this see and that for me, and you ain't blah, 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 wait. I don't care if you respect me No, not. no, 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 wait. Or, here's the thing. Well, what's the go-through thing for the black woman? I got seven deg- I got six degrees. <laughs> I'm like, I got a master's degree. I didn't ask you about your education. You got a six degrees, a master's degree, and no man and no money. Yeah. But you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like there's a playbook that they go to say some things you just say, hey, we just let it go and it is what it is. Like I said, if you have a weave, I'm not against people think I'm against weave. I'm against weave in the fact that it's not for me. I don't like it. Right. But if that's what you want to do. Have you ever dated a woman that wore a weave? Yes, I have. And then what was the conversation like with that? Uh it, it did we didn't even go to the conversation. Did it hinder your relationship because no. of her weave? So what? No. No, it didn't hinder my relationship, but I let it be known that she's beautiful the way she is in her natural state. And she had a whole gang of hair up under that. I, I'm going to just keep it hair. real with you. Mm-hmm. Since we on the top, I don't know how we transitioned from starting Lovely to Weeds, but since we got here, let's go. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not bald-headed, to say the least. No, okay? no, not at all. I, you guys can see on some of the videos and stuff that I wear the, the crochet brazier. Mm-hmm. They're not actually t- hooked to my head. Crochet is easier sometimes. Yeah. Then I have to, and I, I admittedly, it didn't take me all day to do this, mm-hmm. but we have to go through things with the weather drying our hair around and, you know, just the maintenance of it. So sometimes it is a bit much and it is, if there's some styles that are easy to do, sure. some people will put a wig on top of it and keep on stepping. So more lot. Cause mm-hmm. a lot of, <laughs> sorry, more lot, but that a lot of women that wear wigs aren't bald. I right. mean, hell Beyonce, she's the queen of wearing weaves and they, her mom uh, put up a photo of her natural hair and it's, like mm-hmm. to the past the middle of her back. And and don't get me wrong, I, I'm not saying I'm against that. What I'm saying is most real men don't like it, number one. But number two, if you're gonna do it and that's what you want to do, I have no problem with it. It's just I'm just gonna tell you from a man's perspective. So you guys are only looking at it from a woman's perspective. Okay. This is a baseball hat. 
my hat hair gets sweaty and things like that. You know, I got to wash this hat every now and then to keep it mm -hmm. clean. So you got to weave on top of your head. When we're, we're trying to get with you, don't you think that we smell the sweat? Okay, see, that's a whole horse of a different color, y'all. If a woman's weave is funky, that's a hygiene issue. No, exactly. But, but, but what yeah. I'm saying is, though, some women... They don't realize that that's going on or well, whatever. Well, that's your you know. woman, but like, baby, your 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 uh, wig is kind of musty, right? Okay, but, uh, <laughs> and, you, you might need to go no, put some Clairol. No, or no, but it, exactly. But what I'm saying is, a lot of women don't realize they wear the weave too long, or you know what I mean. And it's like, and if we say something, well, then I'm just just personally speaking, if your woman mm -hmm. is wearing a funky weave. Mm -hmm. I can't believe we have this conversation. <laughs> yeah, let's have that conversation. If your woman is wearing a funky weave and you say to her in the best way possible, mm -hmm. baby, don't, the rabbit is getting old, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. We got <laughs> yeah. to change this rabbit up. And she said, you don't tell me what to mm -hmm. do. This is my way, my way. So mm -hmm. like, then that's probably not the woman you need to be. Exactly. With. Exactly. Because there's one thing I'm not going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lay up. This is me from speaking from a woman's point of view. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not gonna continuously. I understand, baby. If you had a hard day at work, yeah. you just want to lay down or something. You kind of right, okay? I can deal with that because mm -hmm. I know you're gonna go take a shower. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna continuously lay up with no funky ass man, right? And so I think that's a high issue, right. and it's a state of mind to where you're walking around and your wig is funky, and because I smell some pretty funky weaves, and it's just it's the equivalent of hot dog water. Well, and. Old musty gym socks. True story. We were at the NAACP meeting, and there was an older lady that sat in front of us. Now, if you're going to fool us, and she had a PhD, she was a doctor. Uh, didn't you see her track that was going? Her, 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 her thing well, with I her blonde the, hair. I didn't have the vantage point that you had because you were sitting directly behind her. Yes. You were captivated by her weave for most of the evening. Yes. And her weave had you drawn in. And it was ridiculous. And this is an educated woman. So what I'm saying is, here, here's my problem with the weave. And, you know, this has been my problem. When you wear your hair, it's Afrocentric. Mm -hmm. So I can look at you and say, well, it's a black woman. Her hair looks, it looks like it's, that could be her hair. It, it's grooving with yeah, everything. It's, okay. But we're getting women that look like Morlocks, that look like... <laughs> You know what I mean? And that's my problem with it. And to me, you look like a clown. Um, listen, I would be... I would Your be hair lying. is not that straight. It's I would be straight. lying to... Say, well, black women can get their they hair can. straight. They can. Because exactly. I, I don't put heat on my hair ever. Right. But if I was a rake, a, which mm -hmm. I don't do, a, a rake, a, a flat iron through my hair, I could get a pretty yeah. bone no, straight. Exactly. Um, And it would be really I, I would be lying to say that I haven't seen some weaves or wigs that look pretty outrageous. You know... And in the fact that you know this is just this is just not a good representation. It's not a good representation, um, and then and you know I say it all the time. Sometimes I'll be places I can't tell if that's a transvestite or if it's a woman. Well, I, I, because some of these women look so hard in the face, or you know whatever, or if you're dark skinned like our jackets, if you're dark like that, and you got a light colored weave on your head or wig or whatever it is. It really is a scary situation when people look at you. I think, honestly, at the end of the day, regardless of what we're talking about weave or whatever, I mm. just think it's about self love yeah. and the love of each other. Mm. You know, because I don't, I'm not a woman who wears a wig, so I can't mm. speak to that negatively or positively. Mm. I just know why I don't. But I think if men, for some of these women that you're speaking of, mm. if men would start, uh, black men especially, start speaking more, not all, but some more positively to and about black women. Maybe, just maybe, I don't know for sure. sure. Some of these black women will feel free enough to take the hair off. But again, I know a lot of women who wear the hair for convenience. Mm -hmm. It's not, listen, I work out quite a bit. So it's not, oh, you, your, your girlfriend's calling. It's not, um, it's not always easy to work out. I understand. And man, I couldn't maintain this working out, sweating all over okay, the place. Okay, I've got a solution. Go see uh, Black Panther and hopefully y'all will get rid of that. And Did become... you find the movie? <laughs> no, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. I've been so damn busy. Right. But anyway, let me get back to the original uh, post there. Uh, Sergeant. Uh, lovely. Lovely. Ooh. I don't think she was wrong. She probably got an LOR and that's how the Air Force is going to address it. Right. She will probably continue. She most likely will continue in her career. But you know what? I don't think she was wrong because it is a uh, thing that is going on within our community. Right. So uh, talking about the NAACP and. 
people always say this, and I'm going to say this as well. We went to the NAACP, and uh, what was his name? Cooper. Mr. Cooper. Dr. Cooper. Dr. Cooper. Mm -hmm. He was there. He was the guest speaker. He was really the only reason I went Mm -hmm. to uh, the NAACP. And um, Dr. Cooper was there. And here we are at the NAACP, and I saw nothing but older women with, with all these ma- master weeds, and they're all educated. You know, and to me... Th- you I say master weeds or yeah, master ma- degrees. Yeah, master degrees with <laughs> master weeds. But I- I'm going to tell you, I'm serious. To me, the message gets lost. How can I be have pride in the NAACP when I see women that don't even love themselves, again, in my opinion? Again, because see, Donovan, you finna get your ass in trouble. Go so ahead. I'm I'll, get, I'll, I'll get in I'm, trouble. I'm, I'm I'm going to help you. I, get, I, I'm just saying, I'm that's help, how I feel. I'm going to help you get your ass out of trouble, okay? okay? Thank you. Because a woman wears a weave, and I've said this to you a hundred thousand times. Mm-hmm. I don't mean she don't love herself. That's a true. A weave does not equate to a lack of love of self. It doesn't. No, I, I now, agree with you. I agree with you in some respects mm-hmm. that some of the weaves are just, come on, sister. Right. That weave is a bit much, but mm-hmm. I don't think that equates to a woman not loving herself. I'm telling no, you. No, I agree with I you. I got a head full of hair. No, no, I agree with so you. So I understand the convenience. No, no, I agree with you. What I just said mm-hmm. was, I, Donovan, feel you don't love yourself. That's how I feel. I, and, and you know what, brother Kate? Nobody take your opinion right. away from you. It is exactly. yours and yours Exactly. Alone. You know, when I see a woman doing that, especially these so called educated women, mm-hmm. Who should be an example to well, the maybe younger women? Well, they're busy. They got all these, you know, they got to go to well, this career. And well, no, it's, they don't it, have time. No, no, it's, it's obvious. That. It's obvious you know, that they're, they're busy. Remember back in the day when our mamas had time to comb their hair? Yes. And they went to work and stuff? That's what I'm saying. I'm just, you know, just throwing that out there. No, I'm that's what I'm saying. Easy. No, but it's like you. Okay, if you're going to do that, put Afrocentric weave in your hair. I That's what it. I'm saying. I get it. So the blonde, the, yeah, the blonde highlights and stuff that, 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 you know, here you're at the NAACP and you see a Negro peeing women. You know what I mean? That's my problem. It's like, how? I, I just don't get it. You know, I mean, it's different if you're in there and you got the boom shakalaka braids and you're, you know, hey, you know, I'm proud of, you know, of my heritage or whatever. Yeah. But all I'm seeing is Negro peeing stuff. And I'm like, you don't love yourself. Don't, don't, don't. How could you sit here and tell me about the NAACP? And, I and, say this again. and you read the NAACP thing. <laughs> they haven't done nothing since 1965. Done. That was odd. Mike yeah, that drop. was very odd. Mike and then, yeah, drop. I did say that as I guess their mantra on the bottom, their greatest achievement was civil rights. Civil rights and uh, uh, voting rights act, nineteen sixty five. Yeah, I haven't done shit since. And again, I'm at the NAACP as a man, and and you know I'm I'm a uh, I'm a real man, and I'm pro man. I'm not anti woman. I'm just You're pro a chauvinist. Man. Yeah, I'm not a feminist. You're right. I see all these women, which you know they had to step up and do it because there ain't a lot of brothers doing that. But it's like. NAACP is full of women. You know, and I'm like, where are the men? Where are these young men? Ray Ray sitting at home playing PlayStation. If the, the daughter is at the NAACP meeting, why aren't you making this boy go? Uh-uh. I want answers, goddamn. I, hey, I ain't that. That's not okay. my situation. All right, but again, but you, but you my see daughter where I'm coming used back. to go to the meetings. No, no. I used to make her go. Again, a daughter. But, but do you see what I'm saying, though? Yeah. If, if I was a member... Of this organization, this is why the organization is dying out. I'm not saying because women well, are doing it. Well, there were some boys there. Remember, the boy yeah. who won some awards. Yeah, and, yeah, but but he, he, two of the boys were Hispanic. The he didn't two, know the award. Right, what, what right. The award it was that he won. Right, two of the boys were Hispanic. I'm mm-hmm. talking about in general. Where are our young men? Uh, well, maybe I should be asking you that. I mean, y'all, it's the men that needs to teach the men. Just like it's the I've women taught my that boys. Need to teach the I've men. taught my boys. But it goes outside of our home. Once mm-hmm. you taught your boys, now go what teach. Is, the, what a minute! I'm just saying. You know nah, I teach. Nigga. You know yes, I teach. Yes, I did say nah, nigga. Uh-huh. Because I wasn't <laughs> a, you not too long ago talking about why can't we hold you accountable? You now, can't hold why me accountable. You want to hold the women accountable? Go right. hold the men accountable. Right, but I'm, I'm saying for me, you know, I go out there and I school them I brothers okay, all the time. I wasn't speaking to you specifically. Okay, but I'm thinking that's just right. the men's job. It's like it's my job. Right, I talk to young women all the time mm-hmm. whenever I can because I do firmly believe in each one teach, teach one. one each one reach one mm-hmm. I really do believe that because unfortunately a lot of women and a lot of these young girls have not had oh my god I tagged you with some on Instagram yeah. did you yeah, see it I did I did this y'all 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 this black mama I've not wanted to fight somebody so bad as much as I want to fight this lady when I watch this video, apparently her daughter, I think she was 13 or 14 or something, 
um, wasn't doing the things she wanted to do. I think her grades are bad, her mm-hmm. room was messed up, and all this other stuff. And she, I don't know if she went on Facebook Live to do this. Mm-hmm. She gets on the girl, she, she's recording the girl, and she's like, look at this bastard, look at this nasty such and such, you know, showing her underwear, talking about she don't change her pads, and she's oh, stupid, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and you know, all this other stuff. And I'm like, oh, so I was so <laughs> mad. I was so right. mad because I'm like, you dumb, and I'm getting sick, mm-hmm. y'all, so that's why I'm losing my mind, mm-hmm. so don't charge it to me later. <laughs> right. You dumb mother mm, sucker. Mm, mm. Mm-hmm. That's not a reflection on her, you right. dumb ass. That's a reflection on you mm-hmm. as her mama because mm-hmm. if she don't know when to change her pad, ain't you the one supposed to be telling her that? And teaching her that. If mm-hmm. she don't know how to talk about she don't take... I mean, she just... I, I really wanted to go kidnap this little girl and steal her away from her mom mm-hmm. after I beat her head in with a shovel, her mother. Mm-hmm. It's like... Is that you, you, you're ruining this girl's confidence, and yeah. then and, and I'm not shaming big people because mm-hmm. I'm not skinny, right? But so then the lady shows you know, moves the camera and then gets a glimpse of her in the mirror, and I'm like, You big hippo, mm-hmm. you don't look like you hygienically sound. How right. the hell are you talking about this little girl who's your daughter who you're supposed to be teaching her? Mm-hmm. And so, the point that I'm even making and bringing that up is, yeah. We got to hold each other accountable. But what if I come across that little girl mm-hmm. and later on in life and she's dealt with a mama like her. So her mom dropped the ball. Sure. I get the ball in my court. I get a choice whether I want to mentor her or mm-hmm. talk to her. But I think that's my job, too, sure. to try to help her. Okay. And so I think we just need to do that more often. Everybody has, doesn't come from, you know, pretty good, solid homes. We didn't have sure. the perfect household, but we didn't have issues you know, as the one, you know, in that yeah. video I was just describing or mm-hmm. the stuff that we see on for everybody. We didn't have those issues. And so we need to take those people under our wings and say, you know what? Maybe you didn't learn this. Like the girls I was talking to the other, mm-hmm. the other day. Maybe they just didn't know, you know. Well, you one know. One of the girls was talking that I talked to, you know, was in a relationship with a guy who wasn't treating her right. And, you know, she, she, you could tell she really loves him, but. Maybe she hasn't been taught that you are, you know, worth so much more. Sure. You're worth more than being with a guy who's only going to give you a little bit of what you deserve. Well, you know, there's a whole generation of uh, people that don't know. That's what I'm getting at. And it's going to be like up to yeah. you and me. Uh, and, and that's and why we do this show. Watching we... and listening to say, you know what? That may be the case. But there, even, listen, you ain't got to take a person into your home. It could take five minutes yeah. to just talk to somebody. Yeah. Well, it's just like growing up and you had that teacher that, that, that was really influential to that you. That changed your life. Right. There's somebody... Took an interest in, in, in you. Right. That changed a person's life. It could be... It, it don't even have to be five minutes. It could right. be five words that you yeah. impart upon somebody and they go change the rest of their life yeah. for the better. I had a um, coach Spain in uh, Japan. I was in seventh grade. He told us the, the story. Hey, how he had to do everything to, to go to college. Mm-hmm. He lost his father and stuff. And he did, he did everything. And that kind of inspired me to do what I had to do. But anyway, um, we uh, during the, the festivities of the NAACP... Mm-hmm. Uh, there was Dr. Cooper there, and he spoke about group economics. And I want you guys to take a look. I did videotape the uh, event, and I want you guys to take a look at this video. For those of you guys that are on the podcast, uh, go to YouTube channel, and you will see it over there. News from the Edgemont. You'll see it over there, and go to my personal channel. You guys will see it, and we'll hashtag uh, Dr. Cooper uh, on there as well, so you could uh, look his stuff up. But please take a look at this, listen to his message, and comment and suggest. So now, roll that beautiful. Bean footage. <laughs> He's talking the real. Yes, he is talking the real. Um, and it's something we often talk about. You mm-hmm. know, I talk about group economics, especially on my show on Sundays, a lot because learning the basis and the basics of group economics. And this model is not original to any uh, to him or I. Dr. Claude Anderson has spent a copious amount of years developing. Um, you know, the uh, group economics model telling us in great detail as to what it is we are supposed to be doing as a black community um, in order to get to the next level, to get with ours. Mm-hmm. Because Dr. Claude Anderson also talks about how we as black people, as he also illustrated, are going lower and lower and lower down in society to where it's going to come a point where we're non-existent. Exactly. We're almost already at that point to where people are like, Oh, another person got murdered. Oh, okay. What's mm-hmm. for dinner tonight, honey? Right. It's not even a, you know. It's pretty much there now it, to me. It's just like, it's every day. Yeah. It is there. And so, right. you know, what is it going to actually take? 
for us to get the message and start saying, okay, it's now or never. Right. Well, it's just like the example Dr. Cooper used in the video. Mm -hmm. And and, and uh, what he was saying was, you know, you get a black gas station Mm -hmm. and we say we're going to take all our dollars and go to that black gas station. Now, I am all for that concept, Mm -hmm. but unfortunately... The white man's ice is cooler than ours. Yeah, well, you know, I, me personally, I don't care. Well, I do care, but if mm. it was the a black or a gas station in where we live, mm. if it wasn't that close to my house, I would definitely drive over there mm. to get the gas. Sure. I would. I mean, because at the end of the day, we have to realize it's only us that's going to save us, and it's going to be our dollars. But I don't want you to get the money because I now I see you driving around Alexis. Yeah, that's okay. But you know, then when I open up a business, I hope that you will return the favor. See, it's reciprocity. Yeah, but, it, it but what if I don't? I'm not a business person. So how how do I? Well, I mean, you're not. You're definitely not getting nothing out of giving your money to the white people. They ain't giving. Good point. The Asian people aren't doing nothing for you, Good so point. it might as well be us. Good point. I mean, at the end of the day. It's going to be us to save us. And I keep saying that because it's true. Nobody mm-hmm. else is coming to save us. If, you know, Habib can mm-hmm. have a gas station. Sure. Why can't Jerome have a gas station? Mm-hmm. You know, why is it that you have L, um, L super, super. Cardenas, right, Cardenas. Yeah. They have, uh-huh. the, and they all shop there. They don't shop at the other store. They shop at their own grocery that's, store. That's because that's what their own banking. Do. That's group economics, and and that's why uh, Dr. Cooper. We're going to have him on your uh, show, uh, on your podcast, and you know, invite him out, and you know, um, you know, so he okay. can talk about it a little yeah. bit more. I think it'll be a great thing because we talk about this all the time, right. finances stuff like that. Now, uh, I'm gonna put it to the test. I went to Uncle M's Southern Smokehouse. Watch out now. That's a yes. personal childhood friend of mine. Yes, Uncle M's? Uh, both of them. You, you know these people? Absolutely. All my life. You do? All my life. We can go up there right now. Yeah. Then. Okay. We can, we can get a free play. I don't know about all that. Okay. Right. You got it. Do like that. But, uh, but Uncle- I don't know what, how to... I, I, listen, before you go, mm-hmm. I don't know how the food tastes and all fairness because went. I'm a vegan. Yeah, I already went. Okay, yeah. but it was okay. My, I mean, man, I'm, I'm my man ate it and he loved it. Okay, remember I'm I'm, I'm you I'm, piggy. I'm born in Louisiana, so Donovan nobody likes, cooks like my mama. Donovan, Donovan okay. likes glory greens out the cans. So. No, no, I do that because I get too lazy. But I just made a. I just made because it's been cold. I just made got my crock pot out, and maybe some red beans and rice, and I almost ate. But well, I'm I'm almost done eating the whole thing myself. I'm but gonna anyway. be lying, but continue. No, it's, 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 it's in the refrigerator. Go ahead. But uh, Uncle M, so we're gonna put this thing to uh, to the test. Okay. And I told him I was gonna put this on the show and stuff like that. So Uncle M's, you guys check it out. It's uh, www.uncleems uncle e m s dot com. Check it out. It's here in Moreno Valley, right off of um, Frederick and Alessandro. Fredericks and Alessandros, uh-huh. and check it out. They have some. Uh, the brisket is really good. So. I, I've, I've heard nothing but rave reviews about yeah. it. Like I said, unfortunately for me, <laughs> I can't eat you it can because smell I'm the, vegan. Yeah. But I, everybody I've talked to, including mm. my man, who is, you think your ass is picky. Yeah. That He's, dude is picky. Well, you know. He loved it. Yeah. So I yeah. take his word. And, and I have to say their cabbage was good. Okay. So uh, we're going to be highlighting them so you guys g- uh, get ready for that. So since we're talking about finances, here's one thing that I have been putting out there and I've been saying. Right now, the stock is down. The cannabis stock, I've been sharing it with everybody that that wants to get involved with that. I've bought five shares right now. I'm going to buy another share today. Right now. Okay, why don't you buy me a share? I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a share if you want to come in. Yeah, buy me a share. Okay. (laughs) But no, 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 but seriously, no, no, seriously. Let me ask you this. You're you're an educated woman. I think so. And and a lot of people don't know your educational background, but I happen to know it. Mm -hmm. So I know you're highly educated. Why would you want to share? Seriously, just I want to share because if anybody knows how the stock market it works, you buy low and anticipate that it does great things, and then your little let's say five dollar mm-hmm. little buy in is now two hundred. Well, exactly. Well, the stock is thirty four, so I'll get you a, a full stock. But what I'm saying is, this particular stock is cannabis. For those that don't know what cannabis is, that is weed. Uh, the ganja, yeah, Mary Jane, Mary Jane. uh, whatever, that sticky, E-E. right? Yeah, yeah, whatever we you guys call like, it. We smoke it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never touch the stuff. Okay, we got a lot of relatives that that, right. that that do it now. Why? And I've never done drugs in my life, illegal drugs in my life, but <laughs> ah, no, I like illegal. That. illegal. Yeah. <laughs> well, everybody's done drugs, but I've never done illegal drugs. Ibuprofen, did that count? No, that, that's over the count. <laughs> but, um, but, but you know, I'm on a lot of drugs because of my military service, but um. Prescription. But here's the thing. I am smart enough to know that with the cannabis 
uh, thing going on in Colorado, and it's getting more and more legal as things get going. And next is going to be prostitution. Well, That's shit, the next. California is legal. Yeah, it's legal, yeah. but you can't be in your car and do it. It's legal to have. In your house, so basically, the law really hasn't changed. So you can't just be talking up at the edge, walking down. Yeah, the street. you hey. can't be walking down the street doing it. You can't be in the park right. doing it. You know, but you know, but people still doing it. Though. Yeah, but people are still doing it. And then when they get arrested, they want to fight stuff. No, you can't do it. But anyway, so the law says you can have it, but in your home, right? Okay, right. right. You know, you can't be driving around and you guys like having to open a container in your car. You can't have weed in your car still. So it's, it's the equivalent of in the end of prohibition. Whereas not, alcohol is not legal, however, you dumbass, don't be driving around drinking, right? And all that, right? Okay, got it. Right. If you're in a uh, now, I know what I do when I get uh, the stone. I start smoking. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, if you're in a place where they're having like a cannabis convention, right? And you're all in that building smoking it. Yeah, it's fine. They just have one in Vegas, as a matter. Yeah, of fact. exactly. Uh-huh. But uh, so uh, we know that people are going to smoke this stuff, right? Now, here's the problem with with the cannabis industry right now because it's still federal law still outlaws it, right? So on the stock market, the stock market's about supply and demand, and there's all these little things to it. The, the baddest thing about the cannabis is it doesn't go through banks right now. Yeah, banks ain't messing with it. Right. right. Not right now, but because mm-hmm. they're still trying to work it out. How are they going to do this? Because you got a lot of people that sell it illegally that are trying to money launder it through banks, which is right. why they haven't worked it out yet. So it, right. right now, it's a cash industry. Right. But uh, this stock that I've gotten is... Uh, R.J. Reynolds, which does cigarettes, they, they're okay. a part of it. It's 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 uh, corporations outside Why the United States. Why do you think States they're a part because, of it though? Because they know that that's their next you, biggest. Oh, it's sick of weed. Yeah, absolutely. That's their you know that's their next biggest crop. I mean you know here I am. I've got a, a hundred yard, a hundred acres of cigarettes, Should tobacco. I also need to get in that. Right, but now it becomes legal. I've got a hundred. I've got three hundred acres. Right. Of cannabis because people are going to want that. Okay, now I'm scared. You, you know why? Because when this mar- I see this is my I, this, I'm not feeling well, y'all. Mm-hmm. So my mind, mm-hmm. my mind playing tricks with me. Three hundred acres mm-hmm. of cannabis. Cannabis. They gonna need somebody to pick that shit. Well, they got machines to do it. It's, it's no different Slavery. than tobacco. Yeah. Slavery coming back. <laughs> no. Well, you got, and, you know, here's the sad thing, and you got niggas that will run over there and go pick it. Too. Listen, I ain't picking no lip. Beer racism? No, no. I am not my grandparents. Wait. Sincerely, these hands. Okay, no. listen. No, you want to stop picking cotton, tobacco. I said tobacco. Weed. Well, here's the thing. I'm so pro black, I won't even pick the cotton out of the aspirin bottle. I won't pick the cotton out of my afro. Okay, so. <laughs> but, but the biggest problem with it and why the stock is so low right now is because, number one, the United States are trying to figure it out. But once they figure it out. Right. That stock is going to shoot Kaboom. up the boom because this is an international stock. I got to get in on so that. So if here we are, once again, doing group economics, I'm right. trying to tell you how white people and financial people make their money. You buy when it's low. Right. And you know the beautiful thing about what Donovan is saying? And listen, no shade to people selling Bitcoin. I'm, mm-hmm. I have a lot of people... You know, always inbox me about it, and, and I keep saying I'm gonna. I know a little bit about the Bitcoin thing, sure. but not enough to invest. Mm-hmm. But the beautiful thing about what Donovan is saying is he's not gaining anything by telling you all. Well, sure, eventually, if enough people get in, then the stocks will go up. Sure. Okay, but that's sure. still not right. No, of no consequence to you mm-hmm. right now. You're giving this information for free. Right. There is no okay. Well, listen, if you get in. Mm-hmm. Then I get you know bumped up, and which even still is nothing wrong yeah. with that. But you're just telling people get in while the get, getting's get good. Get on and get in. Get in while the getting's good because right. um, if you're in on the ground floor, okay. A good example is when the uh, housing market went down. Mm-hmm. How many people made a killing when people lost their homes? Right. A whole lot of people made a, a, a and killing. then and then swooped them homes up for dirt cheap, dirt cheap, nothing. And flip them so over. It, it might take a year, two, three, four years before. United States gets their cannabis thing going because once it goes through the banks, right? Banks are on the stock market, right? This stock is already on the stock, but it's an international stock, right? Now R.J. Reynolds is a part of it. That's an American company. Uh, there's a company corporation in Canada that's part of the stock, and all these other little things you got to understand. But it's at thirty four dollars a share right now. I got to get in. I'm in. Now, everybody's smoking and doing what they're going to do, right? And especially the young people that are doing that stupid stuff. Right. So why not Right. get into it while you can? $34? Can't beat that. I mean, you're going to trick off $34 at dinner. Yeah, I mean, getting in while the getting is good. And then when that stock does get regulated and it does go up and mm-hmm. 
you're going to be right there. And next thing you know, boom, 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 that $34 investment that you just made is now 200 and something dollar. Right. Doing that. I have stock in Disney. I have stock in uh, Lockheed Martin, all the defense industries, um, uh, Facebook. I've got stock in all these things. And that's what I'm saying. Us as a people, we don't do it legally. Right. Now, there's a lot of us in the cannabis trade, but it's illegal. Right. Get into the legal side of it. And just be ready. I mean, it makes sense to me. You know, I mean, makes sense to me. because I'm telling you, a lot of my Caucasian friends, they're buying this stock up like there's no tomorrow because they know down the road. Because who's predominantly being locked up for using this stuff? Us. And white folks, too. But I'm just saying young people like that. Well, you use the word predominantly. Yeah, predominantly, predominantly. it's us. So, hey. It's from the earth. Like I said, I would love uh, to go down there and down to Jamaica and say, hey, yeah, keep smoking. Y'all keep doing what y'all going to do because I'm getting paid. So uh, it, it's a stock out there. I'm going to share it with you guys. You guys check it out. Uh, D, I've, I've given it to you. I've put it out on Facebook. So if you're interested in this stock, uh, there's an app you can use. It's called uh, Stash. There's all kinds of little investment apps. Right. Get involved in those investment apps. It's $5 for a stock, $10 for a stock. And, and uh, this stock is a group stock. So it's, it's a bunch of corporations grouped together. Right. But okay. at $34? Why not? Disney stock right now is $125 a share. Really? Just for Disney by itself. Even with that, with the, with the Black Panther kicking ass, huh? It's probably, I haven't checked it since, but it's probably even up oh, more, God, more than I that. So. so, I mean, that's what we got to stop doing. We, let, let's stop dealing with the illegal aspect of it and start getting into the legal. Do what, right. what they do with... Um, what they, when in Rome, do as the Romans? Right. Sometimes. 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 Um, but that's a lot of a lot of my Caucasian friends are investing in the cannabis. Well, I mean, it's a smart thing trade. to do. It's so, a smart thing to do. So uh, that that's my little financial tip. And like again, Dr. Cooper, that's what he talks about. Uh, economics and stuff. We need to start group economics. Oh, absolutely. Doing, doing things together. Got so to. so as a group, if we can get together and invest in a uh, like me and D, if we invest in a stock together, two's better than one. Hey, we better our chances. Now we might not get paid for five years. That's okay. But when it hits, it's gonna hit. Right. The, the stock market is a long term game. Long term game. Short-term right. Game. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Then we have uh, your brother to help us financially uh, move forward. But I also want to also tell you guys about uh, again uh, a an organization that I'm involved with, LotusInc.org. Very good uh, organization. If you if you don't have uh, cancer, I'm sure you know somebody who's had or, or is going to have. Or right? I have an aunt right now; uh, she's going through stage four uh, cancer, which is Jesus. a shock. And I'm going to tell you, she just find out about it. She just found oh. out about it. But then again, you know, uh, our family's a little stubborn. And you know, once again, this woman's been smoking all her life, and it, it's not it's not a smoking. And you know related. what? You, you got to go to the doctor. It's not Black, always you something you want to do. Yeah, like I had a, um, a mammogram Monday. Mm-hmm. I got the results back today saying I'm cancer free, which I knew that, but mm-hmm. it was just that quick. Right. With the technology they got now. Another good thing that I, I want to bring up too is we don't get our uh, STD checks. Every I time. Miss, I don't have a need. No, no, no. But, you like, know, <laughs> for those that don't have a need, but what I'm saying is for those of you guys that are out there, um, every time I get blo- blood drawn, I say I want the whole. Yeah, Being done. I, yeah, I actually have mine every uh, time around my birthday. Yeah, 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 but you know, every time you know, so right. I, I do mine like three or four times a year. Because you, you, you just just because you're going to get a check doesn't mean you have something. Right. It doesn't indicate, oh, you know, yeah, I makes you feel like or whatever. Listen, it's better to just even though you, you know with the same partner mm-hmm. you haven't had, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, because we know AIDS lie do- dormant. Right. Exactly. And they could pop up. They say sometimes three, four mm-hmm. years, or whatever, Ten years down the road. comes up. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's it's nice and wise to be tested. That way, you can say, oh, "I got a clean bill of health." Mm-hmm. Duh, I knew that. Right. You know. And um and also, you know, you got to be real with yourself. Like I said, when I was younger, I was out there doing doing my thing. Well, I wasn't out there. Well, I'm just saying. You know, Not I'm using myself as an example. I mean, you really got to be real with yourself yeah. because uh, you know it does happen. Whatever the deal you is, get that thing around. Yeah. Like, Knock on wood. I mean, even if you, 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 you protected yourself, you know, the condom comes off or things happen, body fluids are exchanged or whatever. And, you know, it, it happens. But right. in our community, especially, we do not get our STD checks. And that's why um, a good example like chlamydia, that is a bacterial infection. OK, people, you know, it, but, it, you know, it's categorized under STDs. Right. But you can give it to me. I can give it to you. And we can go back and forth, back and forth. And it right. will just get worse and worse and worse as right. these strains are getting stronger and stronger and stronger. 
So please, please do these checkups. Black folks, we need to start going to the doctor. Absolutely. Especially those of us that have signed up for Obamacare. Why are you paying that money and you're not going? Yeah, I know it's only fifteen dollars or whatever it is, and but some you're paying. People it. is free, right? Absolutely free, right? So and just free go. nine and nine, right? Uh, well, free to them, but somebody's paying, right? Somebody's I mean, paying. Even for if it. you you have a job, sometimes you don't have make enough to you know sure. to cover yourself, so you get Obamacare. It's Obamacare, okay? Mm-hmm. It ain't Trump care. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, it, you definitely need to be aware of your health in mm-hmm. every way, shape, or form. Not just STDs, not mm-hmm. just cancer, but everything from head to toe. As you know, you know, like I said, I just came back a couple of weeks ago from bearing a good friend of mine sure. was like a brother to me. He had the flu and, you know, refused to go up until the timing was too late. That's and right. ultimately it cost him his life. Uh, California native, easy. He Same didn't realize he had, had the it. age right. until he had the age. He's in the thing. Right. Um, and I'm going to tell you uh, one thing about my aunt. You know, she just found out whatever, mm-hmm. for whatever reasons, whatever the deal is. Now she's old school, whatever. Now. The sad thing is she's going through this process, which is going to be very painful. And you went through it with your mother. What kind of cancer she has? Uh, I believe it's pelvic. Oh, wow. You know, so, but, you yeah, know, uh, we, when she was young, she had a, a tubal-like, uh, mm-hmm. tubal pregnancy or something. Okay. Like but anyway, uh, so now it's going to fall on her daughters to take care of her now. Mm-hmm. Where's the insurance? She'll have insurance. Well, I'm not sure. I'm just saying. Hopefully she has insurance. Knowing, you know, knowing how, you well, she know, has a, you our, know. She has a pretty uh, stable nephew. Uh, yeah, but that it's not, I have my mom to take care of. Your mom's healthy. Yeah, but still, <laughs> but, but, but see, but this goes back to this financial show. This is what we're talking about. You don't know when the time is, but our loved ones will get older. Get some insurance and to that on point these too about, cause that's a, you, you make an excellent point, um, about taking care of your loved ones. We should all get long-term insurance, sure. long-term insurance, long-term uh, care insurance is what mm-hmm. it's called. Because God forbid either one of us drops sick, yeah. unless we have the money to have somebody come in and take care of us, it is going to go on a child mm-hmm. or your children to take care really? of you. But if you have the long-term care insurance, mm-hmm. that insurance says, okay, you know what, you got cancer or whatever mm-hmm. the case is, you this insurance will pay for somebody to come into your home and care for you in addition to writing a check for you while you're, you're out, you know, or down mm-hmm. for the count. So, right. you know, because listen, I couldn't imagine being very ill. In addition to shouldering the, the thoughts burden. that I got bills, you mm-hmm. know, my house note, my car note, I got children, to all, take care. all of that mm-hmm. stuff. That, 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 you can't if you're not well mentally, you're gonna suffer physically. Yeah. And so long term care insurance. And listen, me and Donovan don't even have the ability to sell you guys that. We're not no, even recommending you go to nobody. Mm-hmm. Find somebody that can get you long term care insurance. It's better to get it when you're younger mm-hmm. because you're more healthier. Um, when you, when you're older, a lot of times people get denied because they're like, eh. You have a pre-existing condition. That like that. and you might, you're old enough to be getting something and mm-hmm. you, we don't, because insurances, air insurances, insurance companies make money when you live, not when you die. They make mm-hmm. sh- money when you're healthy, not when you're sick. sick. So, I mean, we don't, we don't know the time, we don't know the place, but mm-hmm. this is what we're talking about in finances. And this is all grouped in the financial aspect. Insurance, that is how Caucasians keep their money in their communities. Uh, insurance they, they insure everybody over there so absolutely and then you know we're paying for it and um, in our community go fund me i want to ask you this guys this question before we leave and i'm not saying this has never existed i'm just mm-hmm. telling i've never seen it never ever ever not once mm-hmm. and there's a lot of white people running around the united states of america but how many times have you seen a white person standing on the corner anywhere asking that you to help them bear their child I'm good not question. saying white people don't, don't have, have insurance, it, right. but I've never seen it. Have you ever yeah, seen it? That's a good question. I've never seen it. You're right. I always see us and other mm-hmm. people of color doing it. Right. And then, um, and, trying to sell fish dinners or whatever. Right. And then those of us that have a military background or Uncle Otis that was in the army or whatever the deal is, if you don't have the money to bury him, he's a veteran. He or she is a veteran. They have death benefits and they can be buried. Right. At little or no cost. So that that's a, a thing you need to look mm-hmm. into as well. Why do we tell you this? Because we give a damn. That's why. So, uh, again, uh, D, this week's coming up. Uh, what are you going to be talking about uh, Sunday? People send me stuff all the time that want me to talk about. or it, I just never know really up until Friday or Saturday. Saturday, what you're going to talk about. Or I can sit down and actually do some research. So you never know. Okay. Demetra K, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Facebook Live. You guys come and check her out. She'll be talking the real. And she will be with her good friend, Tylen the Cat. 
The badass cat. The badass cat. And uh, I'm Donovan Sadiq. I mean, I'm telling you guys, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. And we've got to start practicing group economics and we're going to be left behind, which we already are. We are already behind the eight ball. We already remember when rerun was chasing, uh, chasing the, tra- uh, the truck. Yeah, the truck. <laughs> we're rerun. We're rerun. Yeah. And, and there's no reason why we should be in that situation. Right. All right, you guys, take take care. We'll see you guys again next week. I'm Donovan Sadiq with my partner in crime, Demetra Cade. We'll see you guys next week.